three, two, one. Cringy YouTube intro. What's up, guys? It's Sharif here with the DBS Sources. Sorry. <laughs> I, I had to stop it. I had to stop it. <laughs> Welcome to the parts guide for the Source X. In this video, you're gonna get a quick rundown of all the different parts that I like to use, that Colby Cartola likes to use, and that are available for you for your Source X build. Hopefully this helps, and hopefully we have some fun. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of the video. So at the heart, heart, the heart, of every single quad is the PDB. Little backstory, one of the races that Colby was in, he was pushing so much current, right, through his, his batteries, through his battery leads, and the PDB, it was a mini quad PDB. We had like next to no option. It became a point of resistance for the setup. As he's flying right through the finish line, one of the, the pigtails just desolders itself. Fucking solder goes splattering everywhere. You know, we open the quad, we're just fighting like solder balls all over the damn place. It was literally because like the PDB just could not handle the incoming current. It was enough heat to desolder it, right? So when I tell you right now, get yourself the APD PDB. Take it seriously. It's, it's a solid PDB. It really is. Your only other option is to wire an octopus. It's definitely a major disadvantage as far as weight is concerned. It's a major disadvantage for servicing. You have no regulators, no, no voltage kind of step down stuff going on. And it's a pain in the ass, bro. Like back when we first started this stuff, that's the only way we had no PDBs. Just, just get the APD. Okay, enough on that. Let's move on. <laughs> so next, ESCs. Big surprise here. Guess who I'm gonna recommend? APD again. APD has been incredibly reliable. When it comes to ESCs, right, this is gonna be the first place where you really sit down and you have to think about the entirety of your power system, okay? Are you gonna go 6S only? Are you going to go 8S only? Are you gonna go to 12S? Or are you gonna go for the magical unicorn target of like 14S? Each one has strengths, each one has weaknesses. Uh, and right now, a lot of that's based on components and available technology. Just to kind of like shortcut it like a big surprise, APD ESCs. When you are choosing, knowing what the limits of your power system is will help you choose the right ESC from APD's lineup, right? For this class, there are three that I would look at, okay? They make a 100 amp ESC, which is 8S capable, okay? So if you're gonna run 6S, 8S, you're not gonna do like some intense racing, you're more just building your Source X because you just want to enjoy flying a bigger quad and believe me, it's quite enjoyable. This may be the one to go for for you and it retails for about 70 bucks and it will be more than sufficient for most people's needs most of the time. Now, if you're gonna get into racing, that's really where you begin to get into the 120 amp 12S ESC from APD. This is what I'm running on my rig. This is what Colby's running on his rig. And it is the primary sort of ESC that people have been using for racing, okay? Uh, the advantage of this ESC is it gives you a large amount of flexibility and it's the one that most shops keep in stock, right? Like if you go to the TBS store right now, they have these ESCs. At $100, yes, you're spending 30 more dollars, but you know, if you want that extra 30 bucks per ESC is, is not a bad trade off, right? Now, finally, if you are going to go to the absolute extremes and you know it, you're just it's like, I need the most intense like straight up the only option only option out there is the 200 amp 
14 s esc from apd that thing is beast they i've never actually seen a rig that's run it if and when i know more or have more experience with it i'll tell you but it's an esc i predict it will work exceedingly well exceedingly well now that 200 amp esc comes in at 190 dollars so it's a big jump to go from the 120 amp to the 200 amp right so this begins your sort of pathway on planning your spending for you know your build okay make your decision from this point am i going to run 6s am i going to run 8s or am i going to run 12s or go nuts and shoot for the stars with 14s this will be that point you make that decision and that will determine the price point of the, the entirety of your build so let's move on let's uh, god all we've talked about is apd jesus it's like a friggin' advertisement you know here is where we get into some fun right absolutely get into some fun because we're going to talk about motors and holy crap have the manufacturers really begun to respond let's get into it <laughs> T-Motor, okay. So, here's the deal. Uh, Colby and I have been working with T-Motor on the development of the F-1000. And uh, really, we are now on the third generation. The current generation is capable of hitting 8S. And here's the crazy part, right? T-Motor is one of the only manufacturers who actually tests their motors with the props that we use in X-Class. Some of the advantages also of the current generation of T-Motor F1000s is uh, T-Motor introduced a new coating to their windings and it's a military grade level coating that's very high temperature. Most of the coatings, if I'm not mistaken, please don't kill me if this is inaccurate, uh, but I believe that most of the coatings are rated to around 120 C. What's unique about this coating on the windings uh, is that it is good for 200 C. When they first released this on like their F40s, F60s, uh, a lot of people complained that the, that the top of the bell was actually separating from the magnet ring on the motors. And they were saying, Oh, this is poor QC, da 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 da. They were actually wrong. This new coating was able to allow the motor to, to perform at such a high level that the actual motor was starting to pull apart from itself because it was generating so much power. T-Motor actually had to revise their entire glue strategy in order to compensate for the unexpected amount of power that this, this new innovation, innovation uh, introduced. And based on what I can see from the numbers tested with props that we actually use, the T-Motor F1000s on 8S are literally producing 10, 000, or, or 10 kilograms worth of thrust. I've literally not seen another motor manufacturer produce that much thrust on any prop for our application. Even on 8S, T-Motor is, is, is killing it. We are seeing a max current of about 124 amps. So if you're planning a build and you're thinking about the T-Motor motors, this is where having the APD 120 amp ESCs versus the 100 amp ESCs will pay dividends. The rest of these guys, I'm gonna go through pretty quickly, uh, not because I don't uh, like them or anything like that. It's quite literally that I don't have experience with them. And truthfully, not a single one of these manufacturers are releasing numbers based on the Master Air Screw 13 by 12 by 3 or similarly constructed propeller. It makes knowing accurate thrust data from the manufacturer impossible. Don't take this as like an, a, a, a tacit endorsement for T-Motor, uh, even though I do love them and appreciate them. Uh, but the rest of these I will kind of go through just because 
the information is a bit more lacking. So one of the other manufacturers that has been in this for a little while and have been producing some interesting motors have been uh, Brother Hobby. Their, their entry into the market for X-Class is called the T10 Pro. And the Pro is a very important designation, okay? With the T10s, there's two series, the regular T10 and the T10 Pro. The reason why they released the T10 Pro was they realized that their original design was not optimal for aggressive maneuvering and aggressive flight. So if you are considering to get a Brother Hobby motor, make sure you get it with a Pro designation in these larger classes, okay? So yeah, the T10 Pro is going for 117. So that gives you kind of an idea of the two options from some of the old schoolers in the marketplace. Now, this one took me by complete and total surprise. 3B Hobby, man, 3B Hobby. They came out with an X-Class motor, which really, really surprised me. It's coming in at a right about $90, 90, $91 and it looks good it's part of their new design look so if you like that sort of like futuristic ferrari wheel um, not ferrari lamborghini sort of blade spoke style that they're doing in black and purple these may be for you kind of interested in testing these because i don't see any thrust data and i would be very curious to see what they seem to be able to pull out some good performance usually for for their price point and just in general, you know, uh, the, the real question will be efficiency always, you know, now this is also very exciting. Everybody has been super hype over the iFlight Zing motor series, right? Like, let's be honest. They're pretty as fuck. Ugh, I want one. I want them, but I digress. What's nuts is they made them for X class already, right? And they do have a 6S version, yeah, 6S version, and they do have a 12S version. The uh, 6S version, if I'm not mistaken, is a 4214 or a 4215, something like that. The 12S version, however, is a 5215, which, as we're getting into it, this is one of the biggest staters that has been available, you know, for for the class. The Zings are pretty sexy. They're coming in, the 12S motor's coming in right at around 100 bucks. So I would give those a look if you're interested, right? If you guys haven't heard of RCN Power, you guys need to get educated, all right? RCN Power has been making some of the most absolutely savage AF motors, like, globally. Period. Their manufacturing and sort of like construction is absolutely on par with the best and it exceeds in some cases the best on the market. So I was very excited, very excited about the RCN Power GTS 4715. Ooh, 47, yeah. They went a little bit wider than the rest, a little like two mils wider, right? And they released this motor in a few variants, 360, 490, 650 KV. These guys are coming in a little expensive at $130 a piece. These motors are too attractive, too compelling. So I want to see thrust data on the Master Air Screw. Uh, and truthfully, T-Motor has set as the standard with the current F1000s. I don't see anybody else challenging that throne right now. Uh, but if there's anybody that I, I suspect could, it would be RCN Power, straight up. Another major guys, major guys, they've been putting in work really in, in the class, and that's Mad Components. And Mad Components really are creating some pretty, pretty nuts motors. Their pricing is ridiculous, right? For any of their motors that they are selling right now, they're going for around $90. So they make two, two series of motors, right? They make the Crimson series and then they make the Polars. The Crimson series are a six to 10S motor. 
So for those of you considering 6S to 8S, that is an excellent option for you. Or, you know, if you're gonna be, you know, you know most of the guys are gonna be running eight and you want a little bit more flavor, you can go for a 10S build. The other motor they make is called the Polar. You can, do, you can identify them very easily. The Crimson is a red motor, the Polar is a white motor. Big surprise. Uh, but now this one is fascinating because it is a 10S to 14S rated motor. Whoa. Right, remember those 200 amp APD ESCs I mentioned before with 14S capabilities? This is the motor that you would use. I have no idea what motor or what batteries you can find that are gonna be high C discharge 7S. If you do, hit me up, let me know. I, I'm, I'm a voltage junkie. I mean, voltage just makes everything better. So 14S. <laughs> we have two more left to go, and I, I promise they'll be very quick. X Nova have been in the game for years, dude. They tend to get overlooked, but man, are they excellent products. And so they recently made a series of X-Class motors, or I've had the pleasure of seeing them fly on 12S. I've gotten to handle them. They are incredibly well built, like just beautiful, beautiful motors. And honestly, some of the clickiest motors at this scale I've ever seen. And so finally, last but not least, little spoiler by the time I release this they may be talked about or not but your boy not me <laughs> but one of your boys is developing a new motor that should be coming out very soon uh, I don't want to, to spoil it if it hasn't been released by the time that I, I put this out uh, but there, there are a lot of good options that are coming out and just keep your eyes open and and really demand from these manufacturers like listen if i'm gonna sit down and spend 120 dollars per motor with you right 120 dollars per motor give me accurate thrust data like just period i like i it's a good starting point i need to know current draw at max thrust and how much thrust am i getting da 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 da, da right that I feel should cover us for motors. If you guys, if I left anything out, let me know. Uh, but yeah, that should be, that should be good for us. There are a lot of really decent options out there for flight controllers, but. You'd be an idiot not to get a brain FPV Radix. <laughs> Flying a sophisticated rig, you really want to ensure that it's flying on a reliable, robust flight control system. And that's the Radix, right? Now, really, like, I'm not going to get on your case about why you should or shouldn't use, like, this or that, right? Like, one of the main features of the Radix that will help you a lot tuning your Source X is a feature called the Gyro Spectrograph. And it is unique to the Radix. It's not in beta, it's unique to that, right? And what you can do is you can toggle on your OSD a readout that shows you your traces of gyro data. And you can identify where there are like a, a set of peaks that you want to eliminate. You literally take those numbers that you're seeing, plug them into your filter settings, and boom, now you've eliminated major source of your oscillations and problems in your tune. No other flight controller can do that. And when you're tuning an X-Class rig, which is kind of like new territory for a lot of people, that is gonna save you a lot of time. I have one rule though, okay? Since this is a Sharif Manganis design, if you put in a freaking AirBot manufactured flight controller in one of my designs, I'm gonna find you. Don't use AirBot. If you do, I will hunt you down. I've got big quads, I can find you. They will fly to your house. <laughs> All jokes aside, yeah, their shit sucks, like seriously.
now that you've got like your kind of main components, right? Like how are you gonna wire this shit up? And the main thing that you need to worry about at this point is how are you gonna get your current to your PDB? And the main thing you need to have are a good set of connectors. Don't use XT60s, don't use XT90s, right? These are the lazy approaches. And ultimately, they will limit your performance just like we see on the micro quads, right? Like going from like a JST to an XT30 fundamentally ch like changes how the smaller quads can fly because now they have a, a sufficient amount of area for the current to flow through, right? Same freaking thing is true of the bigger quads. Don't mess around. Don't mess with the XT60s. Don't mess around with XT90s, uh, EC3s. Uh, Castle Creations made some shit that is absolutely terrible to work with. There's only two, yeah, two series of connectors that I absolutely recommend. The first one is going to become the standard. It's already becoming the standard, right? And it's these guys. There you go. Let's show you, like, there's the other side, you know. So these are the AMAS AS150 standard plug, okay? And I can't remember exactly, I believe these are a seven millimeter bullet or something like that, right? But just the sheer size of these guys and the amount of surface area that they afford you really ensures that you have the best opportunity for your current to travel from your battery to your rig okay these guys i i believe they're rated for 150 amp like constant and with something like a 300 amp burst if you want to go a step above this there is a company called rc pro plus that make a series of connectors called the supras uh those I believe are a little bit bigger even than these guys. They are not cheap. They are not cheap at all as far as connectors go. So invest in some good connectors, spend the money on either the AMAS, AS150s, or the RC Pro Plus. I believe the ones that I used were the D6s, but they make a few different models and, you know, purchase based on your expected current use. Uh, as far as your receiver is concerned, don't be an idiot and run a Source X on 2.4, in my opinion. Like, there are people who do it, but really with something this big, with the amount of ground that it can cover, uh, and the amount of ground it can cover quickly, you really want to be running Crossfire and really crossfire diversity that will give you with proper antenna orientation will really give you the highest level of security you know not to mention a like the safety factor b this just the sheer cost to your pocketbook like you really want to spend all of this money on this thing bin it because you had a fail safe like just use crossfire spend a little bit extra to do the diversity setup, it will absolutely be worth it. We have a few battery options. Battery options. Batteries. Really, only a few, right? We have this bad boy. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, our line 95C. Dude, the IRs on this thing, are ridiculously low like absolutely ridiculously low they're as low as like the lowest freaking mini quad packs that we've had to date i am so ecstatic i am so ecstatic about this and we need more like this because up until now i've been running with 50 and 65 c batteries they are junk okay when buying a battery for this class really i would not dip below 75c rated battery now we know 
the C rating is bullshit, right? It's bullshit. But I say don't touch anything below 75C. Really, it's like you get up into the air, low battery, low battery, land now, land now, land now, for the entire fucking flight. The entire fucking flight. It's like, it's just, it's no fun. The problem is, like, even let's say you want to do maneuvers, you still don't have the bottom end to pull you out. It just, it's not there. The batteries cannot deliver it. Be smart. Get on tattoos, but beg them for more of these. They need to hear it from you guys. We need more. Other manufacturer China Hobby Line. I don't have any, uh, but we do need some in the newer chemistries. The last ones that uh, I had uh, were, were the white packs. The only other manufacturer who makes a battery uh, that I know of that is up to a racing or mini quad spec sort of requirement is Get FPV. They make an N2O battery, which is their new chemistry. And all of that aside, the reports that I've heard from the field have been that that battery kicks ass and the price on it is very good. It's coming in at around like 100, 120 bucks, I think. And for batteries in this sort of class, like that's, that's a good price. They are delivering massive performance from what I've heard out of that battery. And I really want to get my hands on one so I can do a side-by-side -side testing against this guy. As far as I know, that is it really for batteries. We need more manufacturers to step up to the plate, but really big props to Tattoo, China Hobby Line, and Get FPV for actually providing something for us that we can actually use. Now, last but not least, props. <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, with props, you really only have a couple of options, right? First and foremost, Master Air Screw. This is their second generation design for X-Class, and I have to say, it is a tremendous propeller. They have done some multiple stage contouring to it. This trailing edge actually is dimpled, kind of like a golf ball effect onto the props. They are doing some very interesting things with their propeller design. They have worked hand in hand with racers. They have worked hand in hand with the champion, you know, Colby Curtola on how we should set up the props, how we can improve the props, and they have been making an excellent product as a result. Now, uh, HQ and GemFan, from what I've heard, are making props, and they're making uh, 13 by 10 tri-blades. Uh, this is very curious, because I'm not sure why they decided to go for lower pitch than the Master Air Screws. Uh, racers tend to prefer a little bit more pitch and uh, in in my experience and going with less seems counterintuitive because we're gonna lose a bit of the feel of that pitch but also the thrust from that pitch and this is the point where I get too serious furthermore uh, HQ and gem fan to my knowledge have, well, no, not to my knowledge. I know for a fact that they have not reached out to either Colby or I or any of the high level X-Class racers that uh, we know. And so I really question how are they designing their props? Uh, who is giving them feedback? And who is giving them, most importantly, expert feedback? Because yeah, you may have a rig that flies, but it doesn't mean that you know what the market needs in this space. And uh, also doesn't mean you know how to give critical feedback and understand the elements of propeller design to be able to say, this is working in this area, is this working, isn't working in other areas. I say this having worked with APC propellers for the last four years on giving them feedback and improving their designs. And I'm happy to say that like the current generation of APC props are unbelievable for the mini quad class. But, you know, really uh, 
any of these manufacturers who want to enter the space and are making products without consulting experts are just trying to profit from the space. It's, they're not really making a product that you should use because they're not really taking into consideration what it will take to win. And if you're racing to win, why use something that was made by somebody who just wanted to make money off of your back and didn't give a shit about actually racing, you know? Uh, so, I don't know. There are definitely some props from other manufacturers out there, but with props being such an important factor in this space, you know, uh, again, I'm, I'm a little surprised and a little perturbed that really we did not hear from them at all. And that's why we've been so chuffed, so excited, and so happy to work with Master Airscrew. It's also why they're doing some things that people have not seen done in props or props of this scale yet, you know? And that's really why they are the gold standard for props right now. With that, I think we've covered props, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I can find a way to talk forever about any particular thing. So. Let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> All right, you guys. So we have, I feel covered damn near everything, right? Like, did I forget anything? You've got your PDB, your ESCs, your motor, your flight controller. Like I said, camera's up to you. I'm not gonna tell you what camera to get. Uh, RX batteries, uh, props, man. I think that covers it for us, you know? So really, I hope this was informative. I hope this was entertaining. You know, you guys who are interested in the source sex and the FBB community, you guys are absolute legends. I completely and totally appreciate all of the sort of love all of this sort of excitement and really like i hope the source x does well man just not for me you know i like i yeah i get a little ego boost out of it but the reality of it is why did i do this project and it was because i heard from so many people over the years like oh sharif i want an x class frame i want an x class frame and I was frustrated because I just did not have the financial viability or the time flexibility or even the space to be able to start inventorying and selling something of that scale. Like really, it's it, it takes a big boy and I was just not that, you know? So I saw an immense opportunity to work with Trappy to not only produce a product that is excellent, to produce a product that could be retailed in volume, but it would get, most importantly, a large frame out to as many people as possible for the most competitive price ever. And we've achieved that. And so I really, really, really hope you guys enjoy it. I will absolutely take your feedback and let's see if we can make version two even better. All right, you guys, thank you so much and really appreciate your time watching this. Peace. Talk about goofy motor. Let's have a chat about flight controllers. Cameras, do I really need to tell you about this shit? Just choose your favorite. Hey Sharif, which... Hey Sharif, which receiver should I use? Sexy batteries. Sexy go batteries. Let's chat about batteries about props. Motor, 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 wah, 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 motor.